today we are in Le Brassu and Audemars Piguet's historic house, um, which is connected to the glass spiral Musée Atelier. Uh, we're here for a very special treat. I'm um, joining Raphael Balestra, who is Audemars Piguet's manager for heritage and archives. Um, and you have some very special Royal Oak pieces to share with us today in celebration uh, of the Royal Oak's 50th anniversary. Yes. But before we have a look, tell me about this room. It's just incredible. <laughs> so we are in the Registers room that is located in the um, historical building that is okay. part of the Musée Atelier because when we redid the Musée Atelier, it was thought as a combination of a forward-thinking architectural glass uh, okay. building linked with the um, um, original building okay. where we redid a bit of the uh, end of 19th century yeah, ambiance with, yeah, the, the feel here. <laughs> yeah, with the feeling. So we are now in the registers room where we have a library okay. and where we can welcome our guests and also where we keep our registers. Oh my goodness, look Where at these. All the registers of Audemars Piguet are kept since the beginning of the company. So, wow. the oldest that we go. Yes. So, so what year is that? Uh, 1880 around. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the this. first ledger is here <gasps> with the first 10 years of production. Yeah. And uh, then it follows on and on. <gasps> wow, that is super impressive. Yeah, it explains the name of the room. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Before we get started, um, I wanted to ask you, for you, what makes the Royal Oak such an icon? It's a combination of def different elements. One of them is the design itself. Uh, from the period of the time that she came out, that the watch came out, it was really um, an unseen combination of shapes. Yeah. The octagonal sh shape of the bezel, but with a tonneau shape watch, integrated bracelet. Yeah extremely thin watch it was also something that was balancing the the unusual size for 1972 yeah and um most of it is the treatment of the steel the okay. treatment of steel so treating steel as a noble material yeah so that was also something that was quite daring at the time yeah so where should we start at the beginning exactly okay here we go Let's take a look of, at one of the first models of the Royal Oak. Okay. Here is the watch that came out in 1972. A steel watch with its particular shape, with the octagonal bezel, yeah. and showing up the screws also in the bezel. Now, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, a silly question, but how do you screw them in when they're that shape? As you could see, as you can see, they are not screws actually because they are hexagonal shape. Okay. So we cannot turn them. If you take a screwdriver here, you can yeah. try, but <laughs> That's, that was my question. <laughs> it won't work. The secret is that these screws go through the case, and on the other side, ah, okay, they get here to be screwed from this side here. Ah, oh, makes perfect sense now. Because this idea came from uh, Gérald Janta when he was charged with the design of the watch. He had to think of how can, it ma can he make the watch waterproof. Okay. And he had a memory, a childhood memory of a man putting a diving suit on. You know, what like those diving suits with the helmet in bronze? Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I've seen the, pictures. Voila, and then you have the bolts that you screw around this helmet. Yes. And he was, he had a memory and say, yeah, it was a strong uh, realization to say that these screws were actually what was saving the man's life. Oh, wow, okay. And he made the same thing here with a steel case where we would screw, would put the movement in the case, mm -hmm. put the bezel back in, put the screws and screw them from this side. Wow. So it is a steel vault uh, protecting a beautiful watchmaking movement inside. Oh, that's beautiful. It looks very, very thin too. It is. It is. That was also one of the idea of the watch. It was the specialty of Old Piguet in the time in the ancient time was extra thin watches. Mm -hmm. This one was also the case. We had an ultra thin movement. We wanted to, to 
also use that uh, thinness. And uh, that was also a part of, um, of Janta's uh, will to have the watch that was always sliding into the sleeve. Ah, oh, okay, yes. Because yes. that was part of the elegance. And we can see here also that the, the watch on the back is not flat. It is carved, huh? so we can find the octagonal back, but we can also see here that uh, we have some parts that are um, uh, lower. Huh? Yes. Which also helps with the thinness yes, of the definitely. watch. Wonderful. Like the one that I have here, that is the same model, ah, and okay. you can see how it slides. Okay, give <laughs> us a demonstration. Yeah. Voila, you can see. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, well let's... Um, so 1972... Now uh, we can move on 10 years later. Okay, 1982. Oh, no, no 19, 1984 the okay. first model came, and this one is from 1986, which is a Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar. With has different variations. Okay. So one of the first we could we saw that the Royal Oak was made in steel, mm -hmm. but with the same finishing as gold. So with satin brush, polish, we can still see the same finishing here on the case. Huh? We have the satin brush on the bezel, yeah. the polish on the side of the bezel. But here we also had a two-tone variation with yeah. gold and steel, because this was the expansion of the Royal Oak in the materials. Yes and also introducing those noble materials. So I see. Express more diversity. Mm -hmm. And here, it is a nice combination of steel and gold that is reproduced also on the dial of this perpetual ah, calendar. Yes. Yeah. That's nice. And a perpetual calendar is a classical complication of watchmaking. That was known in pocket watches, but in wristwatches was extremely rare. Okay. And on, actually, Audemars Piguet came out in 1978 with, when it introduced the self-winding uh, perpetual calendar wristwatch uh, with an extra thin movement. And as we came out with this watch, we also introduced it in the Royal Oak collection. I see. Which was a combining this new, uh, I would say, case uh, design with the classical complication. Wow, and we can see stunning. also the thinness of the watch. Yeah, yeah even for a perpetual calendar, yeah. that's super thin. And uh, we can see also the opening on the, on the case for the correction of the calendar. And of course, this was one of the challenge of the watch, because as soon as you make openings on the case, uh, it is harder to make it waterproof. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> and the Royal Oak was seen as a waterproof watch. So it was uh, one of the issue with the perpetual calendar. Okay. And actually, the first reference of the perpetual calendar had some issues of waterproofness. Okay. And it was changed after a few years, and this is the second uh, variation of this, okay, so where the case was a bit rethought to have a, a better waterproofness. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> right. So what do we have next? Oh, Let's goodness. make a jump of 10 years again. Okay. okay. 1997, where we have the Royal Oak anniversary. So okay. it was the 25th anniversary. I see. And we had different watches that came out at this time, including this one that was the Tourbillon, self winding Tourbillon Royal Oak with a date. This one is uh, an example made in um, pink gold. So, limited edition of five example oh, in wow, pink okay. gold. And in the museum, we are lucky to have the number one. Oh, that's nice. You keep mm -hmm. the first one for yourself. <laughs> I like that. Uh, it's only this one that we kept, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but we can see that uh, we have the, the years that for the 25th anniversary. I've just noticed there's no crown on this one. Is that exactly? That's you spotted right. It's the only Royal Oak that doesn't have a crown. Okay, interesting. Because the system of this uh, tourbillon uh, movement is that uh, the winding system is made from the from this side here. The crown is here on the back. Okay, so you lift that up and then yes, twist it. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's I don't think I've ever seen this one. Ah, it's quite rare because we mm. made only uh, so five in pink gold, yeah. twenty-five in steel, five in platinum, 
I, I cannot tell all the reference, the yeah. different uh, material combinations, but yeah. That gives the, us the, idea. the biggest one was in steel, 25 examples. Okay. And uh, the last design trick that I would also point out is the, the shape of the tourbillon cage that is reproducing the octagonal shape ah, of the yes. bezel. Too. That's a nice touch. Beautiful. <laughs> now I think we have, what do we have here? Ah, okay. Now we come to a heavy part. <gasps> oh my goodness, this is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I almost need two hands for this one. Yeah, we... I don't know if we arrived to the pound, but we yeah. shouldn't be that, that far. Yeah. <laughs> a platinum case and bracelet for the Royal Oak Tradition d'Excellence number no. 4. Ah, this is quite different. Yes, 44 millimeters, so mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the biggest Royal Oak models. Mm -hmm. Um, made in platinum, so tourbillon with a double ballon, double barrel. So here we have the, uh, a double barrel. Uh, so that's for the energy of the watch. Yes. As it is manual wand, uh, hand wand, mm -hmm. a watch uh, with double barrel, we can have almost ten days of power reserve. Oh wow, that's impressive. With a tourbillon chronograph, we can have here and on this side. So. Of course, with this type of movement, we are in a different thickness. Huh? Ah, yes. So, but there's a lot in there. <laughs> yes. And here on this side, we can have a view on the chronograph mechanism. Oh, that's beautiful. And this watch is also, in terms of design, is also something interesting in the fact that uh, after the concept, when it came out in 2002, mm. and uh, where we removed the dial simply, yeah. Here we opened it to see, so there are holes in the dial to show the tourbillon, but also the barrels yes. of energy and a part of the mechanism, which was also an introduction of, um, I would say, like uh, technical mechanical watches that we nowadays have. Okay. Where we can see actually the movement from the, from the front. I see. So this was sort of the start of mm -hmm. this new chapter. It was a, it was a beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, I think we have time for one last yes. one. I think you've chosen this one for me, no? Mm, yeah. I like it too, okay. but uh, I think it would suit you well. Oh, thank you. So, it is a Royal Oak Frosted Gold in uh, oh, look at that. 37 millimeters. So, as you can see it here, it is um, a use of different techniques. Tell me about this bracelet yes. and this and the, and the bezel. You yeah. see that the finishing is quite different, huh? Yeah. It is uh, like uh, if we have some diamond powder shining on it, but it's not. Actually, it's a hammering technique that was used in, ju in the jewelry. Okay. And that we got inspired with, to achieve this technique that we call the frosted gold. Okay. It goes perfectly with mm. this open work movement. Yes, this watch features an open worked uh, movement with a uh, double balance wheel escapement, okay. which was also one of the latest feature of uh, the Calibre Zeno Mapige. Yes. So, and that plays very well with uh, the different combination of colors and this open working uh, movement that is also a traditional uh, know-how in watchmaking mm -hmm. because the open working is the idea to remove all the material that we can so that we can even see through the movement and have an, a different view and as you can see when you see it from the back you can witness that from both sides we can even almost see through the watch yes look at that how long would it take to, to sort of decorate or skeletonize this mm -hmm. the, it's difficult to say because it depends on different calibers mm -hmm. but i would say that it would take at least 100 hours of work just for the decoration okay that's impressive mm -hmm. So this watch came out in uh, 2018 in uh, 37 millimeters, and uh, I a, love it. I love it. It's a it's really beautiful. nice combination, yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for sharing all these magical treasures. Um, it's been such a joy uh, to look at them with you. Um, I really must uh, go to the Musée Atelier and have a look around. Is yes. it open to the general public? Yes, it is. Uh, actually, you can just go online and book a visit. Okay. It is uh, guided tours only uh, in the afternoon, so but from Monday to Friday. 
Okay, wonderful. Oh, well, thank you again. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks.